Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Friday after Ash Wednesday. In our readings, God is trying to make clear what the purpose of fasting is. On the surface, when we fast, we are imitating Christ, who fasted for 40 days in the desert. Whenever we do work, carry out works of penance by denying something we want, we are imitating Christ, who denied his own life for our sake. But on a deeper level, through our penance, we are clearing out our souls. We are clearing out of our soul our selfish inclinations and motivations. The more we remove these desires, the more room there is in our soul for the desires of God, and the fruit of which are the works that he wants to accomplish within us and through us. Lent is all about preparing our hearts to embrace Christ's cross in our lives. When we want to follow in Christ's footsteps, we are led to Calvary, where we gaze upon our God who died for us alongside Mary and the Apostle John. We learn humility and thankfulness at the foot of the cross for Christ's sacrifice on the cross for us. With grateful hearts, let us now celebrate the Holy Eucharist and welcome Christ in the person of Father Joy Zelpinion Pinion, We are gathered this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. Dear Carmelite Missionary Sisters, to the students who are here in this virtual Mass. Today, we are in the Friday after Ash Wednesday and the first Friday of the month of March. We are blessed indeed that we are here gathered, although virtually, we are still gathered in the name of the Lord. And it is just fitting and right that we will give praise and thanks to God in the first Friday of the month as we remember His bountiful and immeasurable mercy of his most sacred heart. And at the same time, in this season of Lent, we are invited to look deep into ourselves. No matter how young we are or how old we are, if we are still alive and breathing, God is challenging and inviting us to look deep into ourselves, to check our hearts and our minds and assess whether our faith is still strong or is it already dwindling or is it in need of help. So this time of Lent, we are invited to pray, to fast, and to give uh, almsgiving to those who are in need. And uh, before that, I would like to ask uh, a little bit of your patience because um, I am now assigned in a province in a provincial part of the Philippines in Leyte. And where I am now, I am in a mountainous area where there are animals, dogs, uh, geese, guinea fowls, you can hear around me. You know? So be patient because uh, it's also the sound of nature, the sound of God telling us that we are one with our nature. And so please bear with me also. And now, my dear brothers and sisters, let us include in our prayer the peace for Russia and Ukraine and the peace in the world. That may God give us peace in this world, in our hearts and in our families, in our communities, wherever we are, so that we can also, we can also share the love and peace of Christ to everyone. So as we begin this celebration of the Eucharist, let us first acknowledge our sins 
and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Together we say, I confess, confess to Almighty I, God and to and you, you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Show gracious favor, O Lord, we pray, to the works of penance we have begun, that we may have strength to accomplish with sincerity the bodily observances we undertake. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We now listen to the first reading. Reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord God, Cry out full-throated and unsparingly, Lift up your voice like a trumpet blast. Tell my people their wickedness, And the house of Jacob their sins. They seek me day after day, and desire to know my ways, like a nation that has done what is just and not abandoned the law of their God. They ask me to declare what is due them, please to gain access to God. Why do we fast and you do not see it? Afflict ourselves and you take no note of it. Lo, on your fast day, you carry out your own pursuits and drive all your laborers. Yes, your fast ends in quarreling and fighting, Striking with wicked claw, would that today you might fast, so as to make your voice heard on high? Is this the manner of fasting I wish, of keeping a day of penance, that a man bow his head like a reed and lie in sackcloth and ashes? Do you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? This, rather, is the fasting that I wish, releasing those bound unjustly, Untying the tongues of the yoke, setting free the oppressed, breaking every yoke, sharing your bread with the hungry, sheltering the oppressed and the homeless, clothing the naked when you see them, and not turning your back on your own. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your wound shall quickly be healed. Your vindication shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Responsorial song. Let our response be, A heart contrite and humbled, O God, do not spurn. Response. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin, cleanse me. Response. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against you, only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Response. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. For you are not pleased with sacrifices, should I offer a burnt offering. You would not accept it. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit, a heart 
contrite and humbled. Oh God, you will not spurn. Response? A heart contrite and humbled. Oh God, you will not spurn. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The disciples of John approached Jesus and said, Why do we and the Pharisees fast much? but your disciples do not fast. Jesus answered them, Can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hello, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ from Mother Carmeli School. Yes, Father. And our sponsors for this Mass is the grade 10. Yes. So it is my honor and pleasure to be with you to, today to celebrate with you this uh, uh, the Eucharist. And um, we are now in the Lenten season. And I know that you are very much aware uh, since you are uh, in the Catholic school. And I hope you went to, uh, to Mass last Wednesday for the Ash Wednesday. So I, I, I hope no, that you observed our Ash Wednesday observance and celebration. And so now, in the Friday after Ash Wednesday, we're continuously reminded of what we are going to do in this Lenten season. Um, we have to admit that uh, in our life, you know, there, are, there are many things to do. We are very busy, especially in this time of pandemic where our style in school is quite different you know, since 2020, if I'm not mistaken. You know? we, we started these modular classes, virtual classes, Unlike before that we go to school physically, we have our face-to-face -face interaction with our teachers and with our classmates. Now, for the past two years, we are stuck at home. You know? We are only learning from the materials that we have at home and through the aid of internet and through the aid of um, these uh, media platforms. And so even though we are just at home, we are also bombarded with many things to do. Let me ask you, how is your prayer life at home? How is your spiritual life at home? Amidst your busy schedule, amidst the modules and other school activities, do you still have time to pray? For the sisters, I think they have time for prayer, of course. Because of their community dynamics, prayer is always part of, of the regular schedules. But how about you, dear students? Do you invite your family with you in prayer? Today, in our Holy Mass, in our readings, we are reflecting on one activity during Lent that we are all Catholics invited to do. No? So... Um, let me have an overview. During this Lenten season, we are invited to pray, to fast, and to do almsgiving. In our readings from first reading, 
from the book of prophet Isaiah, it was mentioned there that God is asking us for fasting. And then they are questioning, what kind of fasting are we going to do? And then God is telling them, when you fast, you still do bad things afterwards. That's not the kind of fasting that I want. When you fast, you don't eat. Yes, you don't drink. Yes, you control your food intake, your drink intake. And yet, at the end of the day, you still hurt each other. At the end of the day, you still disrespect one another. At the end of the day, you still have bad thoughts against your neighbors, against your parents, against your siblings. That's not what God wants from us, even though we are fasting and yet nothing is changed in our personality, in our attitudes, then it means we do not have a humble and contrite heart. That's why in our responsorial sum, we, we said in our response, a heart contrite and humble. Oh God, you will not spurn. It means that if our heart is truly penitent, if our heart is truly contrite, asking God for forgiveness, then if we do fasting, if we do prayer, and if we do charitable works, it also presupposes or implies that there is change in our attitude from bad to good. But if we do our Lenten observance and yet we remain selfish, we remain self-centered, we remain indifferent to the needs of our brothers and sisters, then that is a very big question for all of us. That is why in the book of prophet Isaiah in our first reading, God explained to his people what kind of fasting God wants from us. God wants a kind of fasting that will free others from the bondage of sin. A kind of fasting that we give food to those who are hungry. A kind of fasting that we care for the needs of those who are in bad need of our health. Even though we are in the pandemic period, we are not really um, free or comfortable to get out from the house. But what we are doing inside the house is also important. If we listen to our parents humbly, then that is already a sign that we are changing our bad ways to good. If we know how to help our siblings in their own school works, then that is a very charitable thing to do. If you don't talk back to your parents, you help them also in their work, then that is what God wants us to do in very simple ways that we can. It does not mean that we have to do something big. We have to do great things in order to please God. No. Even in the simplest things that we are going to do, if we do it with love, with respect to others, and if we do it in prayer, then God will be happy with what we are doing. That's what also St. Therese of the Child Jesus is telling us. We have to do the simple things so that we can become big in the eyes of God if we do those simple things with love and with humility. And so if we fast, do you experience fasting already, dear students? I hope no. You try just for a little. You try fasting. What, how, how to do fasting? For example, you eat five times a day. No? You have your three meals, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and in the middle of those uh, main, main meals, you have your snacks. And then others have their midnight snack. No? You cut the amount of food you are going to eat in a day. Instead of eating five times a day, you can eat one full meal a day. And for the other time, for the breakfast and dinner, you can just have bread or biscuit and water. And then the excess food that you cut off, you will save and give to the people outside who have nothing to eat. That's fasting. What else? 
if you spend so much time in playing games in your mobile phones or watching YouTube, TikTok, or browsing through Facebook, Instagram, and you spend two hours or three hours a day using your technology, if you fast, then you just spend maybe 30 minutes a day. And you spend the rest of the hours reading the Bible or praying the rosary or reading other spiritual books that will help you know more about God and know more about yourself. That is what we are invited to do in the season of Lent. I hope, my dear brothers and sisters, you spend your time wisely in knowing God, knowing where God is in your life, so that in the, as we continue your journey in life, as you want to aspire and reach your dreams later on, you will be grounded and you'll always remember that you can achieve your dreams if God is with you. Do not do all the stuff alone by your own capacity. Always remember that it is God who fills you with all the needs that you want so that you can continue living and make your life meaningful. May you have a meaningful and fruitful Lenten observance. Amen. Amen. We will now proceed to the prayers of the faithful. For the community of believers present in all parts of the world, may it be for all human beings a shining example of sincere conversion and perseverance in doing good. We pray. Lord, Lord mercifully Lord. hear us. For the Holy Father and other religious leaders, may they succeed in their efforts to lead mankind to days of peace and prosperity through sincere love for God and neighbor. We pray. Lord, Lord mercifully hear us. For all parents, catechists, and teachers, may they, may they never grow tired of reminding the young that only love of God and neighbor can be the foundation of a just and peaceful society. We pray. Lord, Lord mercifully hear us. For the victims of hatred, violence, and injustice, may they find in the heart of Jesus their consolation and the strength that they need to bear their present afflictions with faith and hope. We pray. Lord, mercifully hear us. For all of us, may we love God and neighbor the way Jesus did and thereby become instruments of his love for all. We pray. Lord, mercifully hear us. For all those who are celebrating their gifts of life today, especially Manuelito Garganera, who is celebrating his 81st birthday. For his good health, his fast recovery from sickness, his safety and protection, we pray. Lord, Lord, mercifully hear us. For all our departed loved ones, especially Violi Tomines, that they may see God's eternal light, we pray. Lord, Lord, mercifully hear us. Let us pray in silence for our personal intentions. We pray. Lord, Lord, mercifully hear us. Have mercy, O Lord, on the prayers of your church and turn with compassion to the hearts that bow before you, that those you make sharers in the divine mystery may never be left without your assistance. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We shall now proceed to the liturgy of the Eucharist. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual dream. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer, O Lord, the sacrifice of our Lenten observance, praying that it may make our intentions acceptable to you, and add to our powers of self-restraint. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him. It is truly right and just our duty in our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For through bodily fasting, you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him, the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this day to pray, by sending down your spirit upon them that is you for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave it thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy, religious, and all the lay faithful gathered in your name. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy in us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with beauty of Carmel, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now, my sisters and brothers, let us pray to our Father with the words our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, 
I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be there. We pray, Almighty God, that through partaking of this mystery, we may be cleansed of all our misdeeds and so be suited for the remedies of your compassion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, I would like to thank the uh, Mother Carmeli School of Novaliches, the administration, the Carmelite Sisters, the students, the Great Ten who sponsored this Holy Mass, and for those who are behind the technicalities of this virtual Mass, the choir, the, um, the, the, the one who is in charge of the multimedia, our commentator, our lectors, thank you very much for your service. May we uh, continue our Lenten observance faithfully, and may we have a fruitful and meaningful Lent so that as we celebrate the Paschal Mysteries of Christ, we too will also die to our sins, to our sinfulness, and rise again with new hearts and new mind and new spirit, energized, enthusiastic for the kingdom of God. So I wish you all a blessed day, dear sisters and students and brothers, and those who are the faculty and staff of Mother Carmeli, may you all have a, a fruitful day ahead. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is offered. Go in the peace and love of Christ. Thanks be to God. The day has been a truly enlightening day filled with fresh perspectives and realizations. Today we've learned that if our hearts are sincere in asking for forgiveness, we should be ready to change ourselves for the better and to avoid sin, to make time to pray and strengthen our faith, to give, forgive, and to do good even in simple ways to act with love and humility in order to make our lives more meaningful. Rest assured, we will keep this in our hearts and live them out always. In behalf of Mater Carmeli School, thank you, Father Joyzel Pinion, for sharing your time and imparting words of wisdom that we can reflect on. I thank our talented choir, our dear Carmelite missionaries, 
and the organizers for their efforts to make this Eucharistic celebration possible. I'd also like to thank our teachers and staff, our parents, guardians, and the learners for joining us in this first Friday Mass. Have a blessed day, Carmelians. <laughs> Oh,